We got a freaking engine in our hand, boys. Today we're gonna to be going over and pulling the engine out of the RFZ. Thank you guys so much for all the response on our last video we had uh, about the situation where I was gonna pull the engine, rebuild it, put a 160cc. Thank you guys all so much for the comments. If you guys wanna support the build and make it happen sooner than later, you can do so by free just by clicking the like button. It really supports us. Uh, my shirts and my stickers is down in the description below. Anyways, let's get right into the video. So if you guys remember from our last video, uh, I have the bike somewhat already disassembled. I've got my seat and my exhaust already off, uh, which if you're gonna be pulling an engine, you're gonna need to do this likely uh, because of the exhaust coming out and wrapping around and going into the bottom and up and around the casing and through the frame, you're gonna need to pull the exhaust off. To pull the exhaust off, you're gonna have to pull this rear uh, fender mud flap guard piece off. To pull that off, you have to pull the seat off. So from a first initial glance, you can see that's the electrical components inside of that black gooey looking wrap, but you can see it comes out of the casing. It's gonna come up behind there and it goes into that. So I need to get access up into there so I can unplug wherever this harness leads to. So it looks like to start with, I'm gonna have to figure out how to pull the gas tank off the bike. Panel number one off. Now a really great lesson is to take all those nuts that you just took out so you don't lose them. Take them right back where you got them from and you won't lose them over the next however long your project's apart for. So that's just a really good tip. So now we got both of our covers removed from the bike. Those are pulled off. Now I'm assuming my next thing to do is I'm going to be draining the fuel tank so I can pull the tank off. So this is the bottom of the fuel tank. That hose right there is what runs out to your fuel filter. From the fuel filter that comes around here, uh, where you can turn your fuel on or off, and then that fuel line runs into your carburetor here. So what I'm thinking is I'm gonna go from the bottom side of this tank, and right where it goes into the fuel filter, uh, this is gonna be where I'm gonna disconnect it. I think I'm gonna drain the fuel right from here. That way there's no restrictors, like it's not trying to flow through the filter or anything. Uh, and then I'm, all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a, like a pair of snips or something, not snips, a pair of vice grips and just like clamp the hose off so the fuel doesn't come out. All right, so that was probably one of the hardest ways you could have done it. Probably could have pulled it down here off of the, the filler and just pulled it off the carb. Nonetheless, now I got that line, it's run off. I got a jerry can down below. I'm just gonna put that down into there. I should be able to just let go of this, this plier. There we go, now the fuel's all draining out. Perfect, so let's go ahead, let this drain out and we'll pull the tank off. There's still a little bit of fuel left in the bottom so I'm just gonna leave these uh, set of pliers pinched on this bottom hose so when you do start taking it off and the last little bit of fuel slosh around there, it doesn't just start pissing out fuel all over the floor and stuff. So to remove the tank, it looks like we're gonna take out these two Allen keys here uh, and then there's one Allen bolt. Well, everything was going smoothly and as you can guess it, we got a little bit of a mishap. So you can see this bolt right there. Uh, it started to round because it's these really shitty Chinese bolts. So now the Allen key that did fit in there doesn't fit in there. So that Allen key that was in there, it uh, doesn't fit no more, so that's great. So now I'm gonna have to struggle to try and get this gas tank off. All right, so we're just gonna go ahead and take out these last two bolts and this fuel tank should come right up and off like so. So now we got a better view of what I was talking about originally was these zip ties and this control module. You can see, oh, that's right, exactly. So realistically, I don't think you'd be able to get in and. Maybe you could get to this middle zip tie, but from what I remember, you could only see this one. So I didn't even know there was a third one up here uh, that's holding on all these control pieces, but we're gonna have to get in there and unplug these so that this electrical piece here can come out. So next for me is uh, before I get into the wiring stuff and cut this stuff and have this dangling down everywhere, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and I can already tell I'm, I have to pull the carb off of these bolts here. I gotta pull these two bolts out to get the carb off because uh, this throttle cable I can't leave, I don't wanna leave attached to the bike. Obviously I can't pull the engine out if uh, the throttle cable is attached to the carb and the carb is attached to the bike. Now you guys have seen me pull the carb before so I'll go ahead and I'm just gonna pull the carb out quickly. If you guys wanna see me pulling the carb apart, I got a video, I can put it up in the corner. Uh, there'll be a card that pulls up and then I'll show you how to tune your carb and dial your carb in, blah, blah, blah. Uh, anyways, we'll get back to the video. All right, so I pulled my carb filter off and as you guys can see it is Filthy, it's so dirty. But this is why I can't preach the importance of ditching that super shitty OEM filter that comes on your bike, uh, that, on, on that stock carb that you get, or even with the Makuni carb, some of the knockoff ones, the, the cone style filter that you kind of see like in cars, like the cold air intakes guys put in their cars, kind of looks like that style filter, so junk. You can literally see right through the thing. And if you see how nasty and coated that thing is, 
you'll know you'll if, if that's how dirty that is imagine if you have that cone filter that stuff's going right through into your carb into your engine and you're sucking in all that mud instead of being on the outside of that filter so i can't preach enough how important it is to get one of these uh uni filters if you guys want i'll leave a link down below so you guys can buy one of your own uh they're like it's a lifesaver it'll literally save your bike so i can't recommend it enough do it it's like a 30 dollar mod that'll save the engine of your bike and the carb and all that from getting like gunked up and full of shit. So, and then I've got the carb pulled off as well. And then I just got my linkage. It's just hanging down on the front of the bike. I just, right, obviously that was the linkage that came down and went into the top of the carb here. That would be where it went. Boom, pull that out. Just got it out of the way in the front. Uh, left the elbow on there so that something doesn't fall down because it's a lot easier for something to fall down than for it to fall in and then down. So I'm just gonna leave that on completely. Um, next is gonna be, I guess, yeah, I'll be wiring. So let's cut these zip ties and start unplugging some of the stuff. So I just got a little, okay, so you, you gotta take apart all four. You got clip one, clip two, clip three, clip four, and honestly, and then sorry, clip five, back up in here, all five of those clips got to, so if you just unplug the whole harness, what I'm gonna do, because it might be like a couple months before I'm putting this all back together, uh, I'm gonna go over and label each one of these and I'll show you exactly what I mean. All right, and just like that, we've got our whole harness labeled. As you can see, there's letters and numbers everywhere and you go, oh my God, what are we looking at? Well, it's very simple. Here is an A to A connection. So when it's apart, I know very simply without even having to try and guess anything, it's just, oh, A is gonna plug into A. And then I've made a very simple reference guide. So A is the main engine harness, B is a coil pack, C is key, D is ignition kill switch. How do I know what is what? Very simple, A is the main harness because I grab A and I follow it. That's the main engine harness that goes down into there. Uh, and I follow the back, simple. B, I'm gonna follow it, goes to that coil igniter pack right there, which that one runs down. Uh, to the spark plug on the side, so that's your coil pack. C, I'm gonna follow it, it runs to the key. Very simple, bada bing, bada boom. D, I follow it up to my handlebar, and it goes to my kill switch. So, very simple. There is those four references for what does what. So, if I'm, mainly I'm doing this for if I do end up doing an engine swap, uh, I can look at the harness and just know what was going where originally to splice into if I have to for new plugs or repin something, this will be really handy uh, to have if you do an engine swap to know what went where. So now we're gonna go ahead and try and take these Chinesium clips and uh, see if we can take them apart without breaking any of them, which is should be possible because they're all Fairly brand, oh great, this is gonna be fun. I can already tell her. Okay, well, I'm just gonna see you guys in a minute when I got all these plugs undone. All right, so now I've got all the wires disconnected. The harness is free and just dangling off the side of the bike. It's starting to look more and more like a skeleton as we go. The other wire that runs from the kill switch, got that just hanging up over there. There was, that's your little control unit that hangs up in there, which is this little black box. Uh, which is the other end of the plug that goes into the other end of the harness So I'm assuming this is going to be your ECU or your control unit that runs the engine of some sort I don't know something like that. Maybe it's not I don't know Next is we're gonna go ahead and take the coal plug Spark thingy out boom that one's an easy one. I like that one. Just go ahead and Hang that up here kind of out of the way spark plug that one boom check done next one is gonna be coming over and we gotta pull this plate cover off so I can pull the chain off of the sprocket that's inside of here that's on the cog connected to the engine. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull this casing off. off. And there is our stator and all that crap in behind there. And there's our cover off. So we're just going to go ahead and pop these two 10 mils and then this little lock washer off and then this whole gear should slide right off. Now this will be a lot easier if you untension the chain first, but I'm just kind of being lazy because I don't really want to do that right now. There we go. Bada bing, bada boom. That guy's off. Once again, don't lose your parts. I'm just going to go ahead and stick the nuts or the bolt, sorry, right back in the holes so I don't lose them and with the flex plate in there and I'll sit this up on the bench. 
If you guys are enjoying today's video, make sure you guys do hit that subscribe button and like the video because it really does support the channel when we're doing something big like this, like an end and swap, and it's going to cost a lot of out pocket. It really does support the channel. So if you guys can do that, huge thank you to you guys, and we'll just get back into the video here. We're about to pull the engine out. So I'm almost about ready to pull the engine. Everything really is disconnected from it. Um, so I've never pulled an engine and I've never watched someone pull one of these engines. So it probably would have helped me, but this is just me just spitballing my idea of what I think I have to do. I can see one set of mounts uh, that holds the engine to the frame. So there's like a, a clamp style one here going around this bottom bar that goes up into the engine. Uh, and then I can see this top mount up here. There's this one that's going through it that's got to come out. And I think, oh, and then there's one, that guy back in there is like an Allen key, and that one's holding it on as well. So I'm gonna start with probably taking the bottom two, bottom four skid plate bolts out up here and up there, and then I'll move to, I'm gonna move to this one down in here, which was the Allen key one, back in there. That guy will be next. Uh, and then I'm gonna leave the top one for last that it has something to pivot on so I can leave that one. Oh, we're out one more than that. Okay, that came out off that bolt. That goes on that bolt. Oh, it's kinda heavy. Oh, there we go. There's the whole engine out. Woo! -wee. Hell yeah. Oh my god. Okay. Okay, we're gooping. We're gooping. It's crowning, it's crowning. Oh my God, it's out. It's a boy, it's a boy. Little baby boy. Hell yeah, brother. Just like that, boys. Got her engine out. Damn, she's a skeleton. <laughs> there, ain't, there ain't nothing much on this girl. Uh, brand new 2020 RFZ, got two hours on it. You know what I want it? <laughs> Kidding, we're gonna rebuild this SOB. It's gonna be sick. If you guys have enjoyed today's video, make sure you guys hit the like button, subscribe down below, check out some of our stickers if you guys want to support the channel or some of our shirts. That really helps us out with when we're going to be doing one of these 160cc swaps, one of these 190cc swaps. If you guys want to see some more videos, there's some video ups up here. Make sure you guys click subscribe for more content. Till next time, peace.